series, the uh, Jesus said, it wasn't based upon some idea that I have of my own, <laughs> as though I could come up with some wild ideas, which to be honest, can't you? I mean, don't each one of us have our own ideas about what we think things ought to be, the way things should be? When we were looking at the Sermon on the Mount that a lot of times people have called this teachings of Jesus, that we like to put things into a box that we can understand, look at, analyze, and kind of focus in on and go, oh, okay, I got it now. And then we put God in a box. And then we kind of make it so safe and set that we always do the same thing in response to that same situation so that we can always be just right, just perfect, just the way that we think we ought to be. And you know, when Jesus came, he blew that right out of the water. Because when he taught about those that were being born again of the Spirit, he was speaking to a sage, a leader of the Pharisees, a wise man who was in the council of the Sanhedrin. He spoke to Nicodemus and he said, the wind blows whither it will. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. So too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. Because you see, God himself would be inside them. And they knew that scripture, but they didn't know how he would do it. So, becoming born again of the Spirit, they kind of accepted. But to be directed by God daily, that was a challenge for their understanding. When Jesus spoke in these evotionals that we're going through on the Mount, he was talking to his disciples, but he was talking to the people too, because they heard. And when they heard what he had to say, they were amazed at his doctrine, at what he was teaching, at what he was saying about how we should be. What we're looking at today is in chapter 5. It's in verse 8. And it simply says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity is interesting. Because, you see, when you have a material that has a lot of foreign objects in it, how do you accomplish purity? Do you know? A metallurgist, a person who studies metal, who creates iron ore or creates gold out of the rock, has to purify that element from what it's contained in. In metal, you have to take the impure metal and heat it and fire it up so that the dross, the corruption, the stuff that's no good is pushed aside so that you have a pure substance. In gold, when you're panning for gold or you're chipping for gold or you're mining for gold, you have to somehow get the rock away from the gold. When you're looking for diamonds, you have to separate the coal or the stone encasement that the pure diamond is contained in, and you often chip it apart or break it apart. Becoming pure in heart is not simply something that is given to you, but that it is accomplished in you by God purifying your heart. He has to remove the foreign entities that are there. Because, you see, the pure in heart have a heart. They have what God said was inside them, which was what? The heart is deceitful and wickedly made and perverse above all things. Because the heart that you have inside you was born in sin, conceived in sin, and in reality reacts to sin in the same way. There's a sinful nature, there's a sinful desire, there's a sinful reaction to the things that cause action. So we act and react and act and react. 
and we get slapped on the right hand and we smack someone on the left. We don't turn the other cheek. That's not a normal reaction. Sure, you might get slapped over, but then you'd get slapped again on the same cheek. You have to turn and offer the other one. So the pure in heart, when Jesus is talking to them, he suddenly has gone beyond the simple understanding of what they're looking at, and he's gone to the place where he understands that they don't know what the pure in heart are. Because the pure in heart are those who have had their lives, their inner being, going through such challenges in suffering, such challenges in turmoil, that they have removed everything out of the way and they have focused in on one thing and one thing alone. When people came to Jesus, they had many reasons. In that day when they were coming, the crowds, most of them came, as he said, to be healed. I want to be healed. God, heal me. And Jesus healed, healed them. Many of them followed him for a while and he fed them because he had compassion upon them. He had mercy. He took a loaf and he made it into feeding thousands. He took fish and fed 7,000 at one time and fewer at another. But now he's saying something different. He's made a bracha. He's made a blessing out of it. He's made a concept, a construct with which he's saying, Look, I am blessing you with God's presence. I am causing you to understand something. One. You have heard it said, no man has seen God at any time. No man has seen God at any time. And Jesus later teaches us that no man has seen God at any time except the Son of God who has revealed him. But now he's saying, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, the people at the time had removed everything out of their lives because they were suffering in such extreme agony. They wanted one thing, deliverance. They wanted a deliverer to free them from the bondage of the Roman Empire that had caused them such oppression that even their very religion had become corrupted. They looked about them and they said, where is this God we heard that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of our fathers, who was supposed to be a living God, who was supposed to be so real that he could deliver us in miraculous ways that he could part the waters of the Red Sea and we could walk it through on dry land. Have we not our own traditions reminding us to remember how God took us out of Egypt and brought us into this land? And yet, when Jesus came, they did not expect to see God. So, when Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, he is revealing a truth that later they would come to remember. Because at the time, they didn't understand it. Nice beatitude, like we say today. Ah, nice idea, it's a good poem. Okay, we got it, yeah, you know, that nice little idea, you know, we'll put it on a little poster, and we'll put it up on our wall, and we'll say, we're going to become poor in spirit, we're going to become meek, mellow, whatever, we're going to become pure in heart. No. Jesus is identifying something here. They shall see God. Can I tell you this? You shall see God. Purifying you is what this life is doing to you if you are born again of the Spirit, if you've become a disciple of Jesus, if you've gone on the mountaintop, if you're walking with Him, if you're talking with Him, if you're growing in the knowledge of Him, then guess what? You're blessed. Why? Because guess what can happen today, right now, in this moment that Jesus is saying, He could appear, this may shock you, but He could appear just like He did in the Jesus movement, out of nowhere. There are stories still to this day that Jesus appeared. There are stories of angels appearing, of course, but Jesus appearing and speaking to someone? Oh, that's too Pentecostal. It wasn't to Pentecostals that he appeared. Oh, that's too religious. It wasn't to the religious he appeared. Who did he appear to? Drug addicts. Those that were destitute. Those were that were poor and needy. Those that were poor in spirit. 
those that were crying out for God, those who needed deliverance, those who had gone through massive sufferings and suddenly heard a message that they said, oh, there's, there's a God. Can we see God? Can we know God? Can we have God in our life? And at that moment, Jesus reveals himself to them. And the Jesus movement is born. And it is exploded upon the scene of religion. And Christianity is never again the same. Why? Because Jesus had said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And the Jesus movement was started in the hippie movement, where the people wanted peace. Oh, get us out of Vietnam. They wanted love. Oh, you know, this this sex is great, but we really want to be loved, not just taken advantage of. And they wanted rock and roll, <laughs> joy. They wanted to express, create, demonstrate, enjoy, participate. And they were regulated into a cookie cutter into a box that they must have short hair, they must have suit and tie, they must perform in a certain way. And society, when they looked about, they rejected as absolutely corrupt in their day. So God delivered them, and he said, I am the Lord thy God. And Jesus revealed himself, and to those that he did, <laughs> to those pure in heart, they were never the same. They went on to influence thousands, maybe millions. Today, it's not just a bracha, it's not a Jewish blessing. Today, in the scripture, the pure in heart are simply those who are longing with all their heart for one thing. God, show me Jesus. God, be here with me. God, sit and talk to me and walk with me and be my God and I will be your people. Isn't that what a Christian is? Isn't that what you want to be? Be pure in heart. You will see Jesus. All purity in heart is seeking Him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your being, with your tenderness, with your kindness, with your anger, with your wrath, with your malice, with all that you are. Seek Jesus. Seek the Lord. And guess what? <laughs> You'll find Him. And more than that, you will be blessed. Blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see God.